What is going on you guys? Welcome back to the channel. We got a bit of a bigger job on our hands today. We're going to be doing a clutch and all the related maintenance on Cole's NA Miata today. First of all, we got to give a big shout out to Moss Miata. This project would not be possible without them. They have supplied us with the parts to do this install. So we got a clutch. We're also going to be doing a slave cylinder and clutch master. I like to do these in a pair. And that is actually the reason why we started working on this today because after we got back from Miata's at the Gap last year, his slave cylinder went out, so he was unable to shift through the gears. So we're gonna be doing the clutch master slave cylinder in a pair today. We're gonna go ahead and change out the clutch. So we're gonna be dropping the transmission. We're gonna replace the rear main seal while we're in there. You should definitely do that if you're ever doing a clutch job. And we're also going to be doing flywheel because the flywheel in this car is pretty worn out. You can feel the chatter anytime he's in reverse or like low RPMs first gear. But yeah, we got a lot to do. So we're gonna go ahead and get into it and walk you through the process. So basically what we're doing right now is just disconnecting everything we can from the transmission. So we've got the slave cylinder unbolted. We just did the neutral safety and reverse switches. Those are on the transmission. There's gonna be like three elect electrical plugs. That's what we just showed you. And we marked them since they're identical so we know which way they go. I think they just undo it. Like this. Yeah, okay. So just like the master cylinder, it's just these push-ins. And what we've done is we've marked one of these with blue. Can't really see it, but it's right there. We might mark it some more. And then one of the plugs with blue, so we know which one goes where. Now we're gonna get the speedo sensor wire. All right, and from here on out, I'm gonna do a little voiceover narration of this, because this was just a lot we had to do in one day. We had a limited amount of time at the shop we were at, and some of the stuff was pretty hard to film. But you can see we got the starter out of there. We removed the exhaust and the drive shaft because we're gonna need all that out of the way to drop the transmission out. And here we're undoing some wiring on the PPF since we're gonna need to drop that as well. There you can see us pulling the bolts out of the front of the PPF. These bolts go up into the transmission. So here, since we're on the lift, we're gonna use a screw jack to kind of support the transmission as we're loosening all this stuff. Now we're just gonna go around the bell housing, remove the transmission bolts. Speaking of removing things from the transmission, before we get too ahead of ourselves, we're gonna go ahead and get in the interior. We're gonna need to remove the center console and remove your actual shifter from the transmission. So on your center console, that's just gonna be some Phillips screws. Pretty easy to remove. Take off your shift knob as well. And there's gonna be four tens that hold on the upper rubber isolator. And then three tens that actually hold the shifter to the transmission turret. And then the shifter simply just pulls straight up and out. So here we've got our screw jack on the engine for some support since when you pull the transmission off it does tend to lean the engine pretty far forward and here you kind of just have to muscle it out. This is a job you'll definitely want an extra set of hands for. So now we have access to our clutch. We're going to pull off the pressure plate and the clutch and now we're getting the 19mm flywheel bolts and we'll pull that flywheel off. And now with the flywheel off, you can see that rear main seal. This is our method of removing, carefully inserting a screw to give us something to pry on to pull it out. Be very careful when doing this, but this has worked very well for us many times. And then we're just going to tap that new seal into place. Take your time, go around, make sure it seats evenly. And we're just going to clean our transmission a bit and apply some grease here before we put the new throw out bearing on. 
And these can be a little tricky, but you've got two ends that are just going to slip over that fork. And once you get it on, it will operate like this. And here is our new flywheel with a new pilot bearing installed. So from here on out, it's pretty much just reassembling in reverse order. I'm going to get the flywheel bolts back in and get these torqued down to 74 foot-pounds. And here's where you're going to want to have a buddy hold the crank with a 21 millimeter and a breaker bar while you torque these to spec. Otherwise, it's just going to want to spin on you. So now with our flywheel torque to spec, we can put our new clutch disc up and this is where you're going to use the clutch alignment tool that came with your clutch kit and this is going to hold the clutch while you get the pressure plate into place. So there's going to be a few metal dowels on the flywheel that the pressure plate is going to line up on. You just want to line up the holes with the threaded holes in the flywheel and then it will just sit on those dowels. So now we're just going to get our pressure plate bolts started. And once we've got these tightened down, we can remove our clutch alignment tool and this will hold it all together. And these are going to be torqued to 14 to 19 foot pounds. It's not a lot at all, so definitely be careful. And there we have a new clutch flywheel and rear main seal installed. So now it's time to get this transmission back into place. But first, we're just going to go ahead and swap out these slave cylinders while we're here. So here we're just breaking the line free on the old slave cylinder and it's just going to simply unthread and we're going to swap the new one in. So getting this transmission back in did take us a few tries. We ended up removing the lower section of the header, the downpipe section, and this made it a lot easier. It was pretty much impossible to get the transmission back in with that in. So you're either going to need to completely remove your exhaust manifold, or if you have the stock header, remove that lower section if you can. Sometimes those bolts can be a pain, but we had good luck with ours. So if you're on the ground, a floor jack will help you a lot here. But in a lot of cases, you might just have to muscle the transmission up there and have a buddy ready to help you as well as to get those bolts started once you actually get the transmission back on. So from here on out, the reassembly is just the opposite of what we did to disassemble it. We're going to get those bolts tightened back up. We're going to get the starter back in, the PPF back on, and get all those bolts tightened up. We're going to get our exhaust put back up. And we're just going to do some checks to go over everything, make sure everything is installed and all the bolts are tight. So as far as bleeding your clutch when you swap out the slave cylinder, this is something you're going to have to do. It's going to take a little bit of time, but basically all you need to do is locate the bleeder screw on the slave cylinder. It's right here. You're going to remove this rubber cap and you're going to want to find a clear hose that will slide over this bleeder screw. It should fit kind of snug. You don't want this to be loose. And you're going to take the other end of the hose and route it to a can or a bottle or something to collect the fluid in. And once you've got this set up, you're going to want to take a wrench and loosen that bleeder screw. I believe this is an 8mm on the Miata. Once you've got that bleeder screw open, have someone sit inside the car and pump the clutch pedal repeatedly. You're also going to have somebody outside the car monitoring the fluid level in the clutch master and keeping it topped off with fresh fluid. So this does take quite a bit of time on a new slave cylinder and clutch master. So just leave that bleeder screw open, keep the master topped off, and keep pumping that pedal, and eventually the fluid will work its way down there. And this is why you want a clear hose, so you can see once all the air is out of the fluid. And once it is good and bled, it should operate like this. You can see it moving that fork and releasing the clutch. So now onto our cast O-ring. Something that's going to help you a lot here is to loosen these two 12mm bolts on top here. This is going to make it a lot easier to pull out, as you can see right here. There's also going to be a bolt going through the cast into the back of the head. You'll need to remove that. And before you do this, you might want to make a mark on where it's set currently, because this will affect your timing. So if you don't want to have to redo your timing with a timing light and all of that, go ahead and mark its position before you take it out. 
and it's a real tight space up against the firewall to get this out so something that helps a lot is to remove the coil packs and just move them out of the way and that will give you some room to slide it out and here you can see our coil packs kind of moved out of the way and this is going to give us room to slide it in you'll also notice the shape of the cast here it is keyed with two tabs this is going to slot into the back of the cam you'll be able to stick your finger in there and feel where it's slotted so you'll just want to get this lined up it will only go in one way Try not to move it too much when you pull it out though. It'll just make it easier to get everything lined back up. So once you get it seated, you can just put your bolts back in. Make sure to get the cast in the same position it was. Use your marks you made to line it back up. That will make sure your timing is the same. And then you can just plug up your wire harness, put your coil packs back, and you have replaced your cast o-ring. Alright, so that is going to do it for this video of our clutch install on the NA Miata. Hopefully this video could help you if you're looking to do this job yourself. I never meant for this to be like a step-by-step -step tutorial, but more of like an overview of showing you how we did it and providing my tips for this job specifically after doing it a few times over and over. Definitely be sure to leave a comment below if you have any questions, I'd be happy to help you out as best I can. Again, gotta give a big thank you to Mas Miata for their continued support and for providing the parts for this video. All the parts we used in this video came from Mas Miata that can be found on their website. I'll leave all the links down below if you want to check that stuff out for yourself. But that's pretty much going to do it for today. But with show season starting to ramp up, I've already taken the Miata to two shows. So we're going to have lots more Miata videos coming very soon. Probably some more installs and little mods here and there. So look forward to that. But until then, thank you for watching. Have an awesome week and we will see you in the next one. Yeah.